Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again on Itama. This week's lesson is going to be devoted to, as a response to Obama's message yesterday at the State Department. And the Torah opens up with an answer to everything that was just mentioned yesterday. And for all those who were just burning, burning with anger over the words that he said yesterday. And God says, If you go according to my statutes, Vet mitzvot and you will do my commandments. And atatit kishmechem, and I will give you, the rains will come in its time, and the bounty will come, and you will eat bread with satisfaction, and you will have peace in the land. Following God's word will bring us peace and true tranquility, and will give a blessing of bounty and true economic development and growth. And that is the answer. But when Israel did not follow God's word, and God threw us into exile, and we suffered so greatly through the Holocaust, but at the end of all that terrible suffering, which no one can describe, a nation that suffered so much as a Jewish nation throughout exile. But God again says he's remembering the promise to the forefathers, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and bring us back to the land of Israel. And here, we return to the land and rebuild our, our homeland that was so desolate over the years that, that we weren't here. And here we are with the tremendous blessing of returning and building our homeland, and growing in leaps and bounds and restoring the Jewish people to its land. And of course we are constantly, constantly threatened by our surrounding neighbors and the world around us trying to again damage Israel and turn Israel again into a wasteland, unfortunately. We have to be strong. And this is what this week's message is going to be all about. And how does this relate to Obama's speech yesterday? Well, first of all, yes, the Middle East here Israel, the center of always of attraction for everybody, has been in conflict with its neighbors, within and without, since the onset of Al Stadium before, well before. But this thing does not begin today, it didn't begin in 1948, and even before when the Jews began to return t- to the land, when it was completely swamps and nothing here. By the movements of the Hasidic movement of the Baal Shem Tov and, and, the, and the famous Gaon of Vilna, when they told the students to come back to the land of Israel in the 1700s. But the story begins way back to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And God promises to give the land of Israel to them and their children for an everlasting inheritance. And of course, this week's portion is so, so, so suitable to answer Mr. Obama. And why? Because afterwards it goes on to describe, God forbid, what's going to happen to the Jewish nation if they don't follow God's word, they don't study His Torah, they don't adhere to His laws. We'll have to go through a terrible exile, and terrible things will happen to us in exile. But after all those atrocities, and we've been through them all, culminating with the terrible Holocaust where six million Jews were murdered, and after these terrible tragedies, God brought us back to the land. He kept his promise. And it says in this week's portion exactly that. And God says, after all, after all these terrible things that are going to happen, God says like this, Az and then their hearts will give in. Ha'arel, and circumcised hearts. We have to circumcise our heart as well. And then they will do tshuva, repent for their sins. And I remember the covenant, the oath I gave to Jacob. And I remember the oath I gave to Isaac. And I remember the, the oath I made to Abraham. And I remember the land of Israel. So after all this terrible period which the Jews are going to go through in exile, yes, yes, wake up world out there. God will remember His people. He has not forgotten us. Throughout the generations, the world, unfortunately, created some kind of replacement theology that the Jewish people no longer God's promised people, God's chosen nation to live in the land of Israel, to be a light to the world. This was a doctrine that was adopted by millions. And when God kept His promise to the Jewish nation, and in 1948, we were able to form a state of Israel again, 
with all the difficulties and the terrible tragedy we faced in the Holocaust, God returned us to the land of Israel. It's a disgrace. It's a disgrace of God's name and the Jewish people without their land and, and being murdered throughout the world. And here we come back to our land and we form a state of Israel. Miraculous war of independence. And this is exactly what God says here. He will remember the promise he gave to our forefathers. And then God says, When they were in the land of their enemies, I did not despise them to completely wipe them out, to nullify my covenant with them. The covenant goes on. I remember the first covenant I made. I showed Seti Otam when I took him out of the land of Egypt, they nehagoyim from the eyes of the entire nations. The Yotlehem Lelohim to be for them a God. Wow. I think the message here is so clear. That again, those who deny Israel and want to eliminate Israel, want to annihilate Israel, wake up and realize that the land of Israel is our inheritance, it's a Jewish inheritance. And those who talk about giving away our land, returning to borders of 1967, my friends, listen very carefully. In 1967, a miracle took place. God returned the Jewish homeland, the center of the Jewish homeland, places like Jerusalem, our, our everlasting eternal capital was returned to us. Our city of our forefathers, Hebron, Judea and Samaria, the center of Israel, the center of our forefathers settling the land of Israel going way back thousands of years ago. What, where do people come up with, with just one, it's so easy, how can I explain it even? It was one easy, so easy. Just take the Jewish people living here after returning to God, return us to our land and just throw us all out of our homes. Right now, look around over here. Look at this backyard here in the land of Israel. So what a simple family story. What are they saying, those who want to return to 67 borders? The Jews have returned to the land that God promised us. Get out of your homes. Leave your homes. Your whole lives that you've been building here for, for tens of years. Some of us have been living here for 25 years, 30 years. Leave your homes. Go away. Go somewhere. Maybe you should jump in the sea, maybe. Wake up. The world must stand with Israel now. Because those who stand with Israel will be blessed and God will stand with them. And those, of course, who do not stand with Israel and try to go against Israel will bring the opposite. The opposite of peace. They'll bring war. The opposite of a, a financial and economical boost, economical growth, they'll bring economic decline. Only standing with Israel will bring a blessing of bounty and abundance to the entire world. Israel is the only true democracy. Let's not deny the truth. Obama spent many, many minutes on his speech, for 45 whatever minutes it was, discussing North Af the North Africa area, the Middle Eastern area, what's going on now and happening in these different places in the world. We have to realize people do want freedom, obviously. People want to be able to have freedom of speech and free in many ways. But when, again, a people have doctrines of hatred intertwined in their religion, of hating a Jewish nation, of wanting to destroy the Jewish people, not accepting our purpose in this world, not accepting us to live, it's not going to make a difference of who's going to be leading or if they're going to have a, some kind of democracy. Because their focus is going to be on destroying and annihilating Israel unless the strong Western world stands with Israel and realizes this game plan for those who want to go against us. I'm the last person in the world to make generalizations. There are always good people out there, people that are righteous, that don't feel the way those who want to do evil to Israel do. And God forbid we're not here to make generalizations. There are good people out there. But the good people out there must wake up and not be led by those who want to destroy Israel and make Israel weak because they're going against God again. They're going against God. 
It is so unfair. It is so unfair to say that Israel has to make concessions. Israel has to give in. Israel has to stop settling the land. Israel has done everything in the world for peace. What have they done except throw missiles and murder and destroy? Obama talks like Hamas and Fatah are one. Oh yeah, the Hamas has to recognize Israel. These guys, you just went out, you knocked out Bin Laden, you killed him, right? Because he killed 3,000 American citizens or so. What has been, Hamas been doing for scores of years, planning and destroying, murdering men, women, and children day and night in Israel? The proportions in Israel, it's, it's, it's unproportional how many people have been murdered by this kind of terror. And it's coming out speaking about Hamas like a partner. The only problem is not recognize Israel. You had one Bin Laden, but we have, unfortunately, many, many, we can't count them, that want to kill us and wipe us out. How dare you tell us to leave our homeland that God gave us? Do you want to leave your home? We have an eternal right to this land. No, we will not leave here. We're going to stay strong in our land, and no one's going to budge us from our land. It is time now the Jewish people stand up for their rights. They've been trying to placate for years, trying to get, not get wet between the raindrops. But now it's time to stand up, roll up our sleeves and say we are standing with the nation of Israel. We're going to stand for our people. We're not going to give in to fancy words about peace. This is not peace. This is destruction. And Israel is a real, real ally of America. And there's so many wonderful people out there in America that can make a difference if they stand up now and not allow the State Department to get away with this. Israel is going to be faced with very soon in September, they want to declare a state. And now they made it much easier for the bargaining. Right there, 67 borders, it all begins there, right? So immediately you already gave away all that wonderful land over here with all the people living here. Just leave, go, no jobs, just throw them out of the homes, let them do what they want, destroy Jerusalem. This right now, unfortunately, is a nightmare. If people really think about it, it's a nightmare. But we have to stand up because we know that God is with us. God did not let Israel fall in the wars, the Yom Kippur War. Let's take an example, the Yom Kippur War, where we were caught off guard. We stood up again. We retained our, we retained our stance and we regained our control. The Six Day War was a miracle for Israel. And all the miracles when we were bombed by Iraq, all the missiles fell in the land of Israel. At the end, we survived because we're a nation of survivors. And we're going to survive. We're going to survive all those who stand against us. And we will persevere. And we're going to go forward because we're not afraid. We're not afraid. We're willing to struggle. We're willing to stand up. We are asking right now, there's a time for the world. Those who stand for real good and truth, say the truth, stand up, and we can win this. It is never too late to make a change to realize that you made a mistake and you can make a big difference and turn things around because if America wants a good blessing they really want to be blessed they have to make a change they have to stand behind Israel and support Israel's right to live in the land of Israel this land was given to us by God that is the most important right where did this date of 67 come from? these are all propaganda lies that were, that were put in through the media and through nations that really despises our inside. We have to speak the truth, and we have to say what's right. No longer we have to hide our faces in the dirt, we have to stand up as proud Jews in our land, be strong, and we have wonderful friends out there, wonderful friends, and we need every one of you to stand up for Israel. We will be safe and we will succeed. Very soon we just celebrated our Independence Day, and very soon we're going to celebrate Jerusalem Day, United Jerusalem. What a miracle it was that God returned us after thousands of years of exile. Where was our temple? Where, were, where did our temple stand? If not on, on Jerusalem, on that mountain. How could people declare this is not our land? This is, this is, these are lies. This is hatred of Israel. We're the real true, on the other hand, we're the real true people that reached our hands out for peace every day. We have nothing against those who want to live in peace in Israel. We have so much to say, those who want to throw us out and destroy our right as the leaders of, of, of Israel, the leaders of the land of Israel over here. The Jewish people, it's their land. They lead this land. It was given to them. You want to you live in my home? 
and peaceful, we have no problem with that. We have a problem with those who want to throw us out of a home and take our home over. There are only one country out of the entire world which is huge. Let us live here in peace. Enough is enough already. To our dear friends of Itama, I want to wish you a wonderful Shabbat. I want you to be strong and bold and God-fearing. Because only that way we will succeed. Im bechukotai telecho. You must go according to my statutes. Mitzvotai tishmu, you will do my commandments. And that is the secret of blessing. We will have peace, we will have prosperity in our land. Shabbat shalom. Lihitot shalom shalom.